Once upon a time, in the land of gods and mortals, King Peleus of Thessaly married Thetis, a beautiful sea nymph. Their wedding was a grand event attended by all the gods and goddesses of Olympus. The music of Apollo's lyre filled the air and the gods brought magnificent gifts. Hera gave them a golden wreath, Athena offered a splendid robe she had woven herself, and Poseidon presented a pair of immortal horses. However, not all was joyous. Eris, the goddess of discord, was not invited to the wedding. Furious at the snub, she threw a golden apple among the guests, inscribed with the words, To the Fairest. Chapter 2 The Judgment of Paris The golden apple sparked a fierce rivalry among three powerful goddesses, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. Each claimed the apple and appealed to Zeus to decide who was the fairest. Unwilling to make such a difficult decision, Zeus appointed Paris, the prince of Troy known for his fairness, to judge. The goddesses each tried to bribe Paris. Hera promised him power and control over all of Asia. Athena offered wisdom and victory in battle. Aphrodite promised him the love of the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen of Sparta. Paris, swayed by Aphrodite's promise, awarded her the golden apple, unknowingly setting the stage for the Trojan War. Chapter 3 The Abduction of Helen Under Aphrodite's protection, Paris traveled to Sparta, where he was welcomed by King Menelaus and his beautiful wife, Helen. During Menelaus' absence, Paris seduced or abducted Helen, and they fled to Troy, taking a great treasure with them. When Menelaus returned and found Helen gone, he was furious. He sought the help of his brother Agamemnon, the powerful king of Mycenae, who saw this as an opportunity to expand his influence. Together, they sent messengers to all the Greek kings and heroes, reminding them of their oath to defend Helen's marriage. Chapter 4 The Call to Arms Many great heroes answered the call to arms. Achilles, the invincible warrior, Odysseus, the cunning king of Ithaca, Nestor, the wise old king of Pylos, and Ajax, the towering warrior of Salamis, among others. They gathered at Aulis with a fleet of a thousand ships, ready to sail to Troy and wage war. However, the Greek fleet was stranded at Aulis by unfavorable winds, caused by the goddess Artemis, whom Agamemnon had offended. Chapter 5 The Sacrifice at Aulis The Seer Calchas revealed that to appease Artemis, Agamemnon must sacrifice his daughter, Iphigenia. After much anguish and reluctance, Agamemnon agreed. As Iphigenia was about to be sacrificed, Artemis intervened, replacing her with a deer and taking Iphigenia to serve as her priestess. With Artemis appeased, the winds turned favorable and the fleet set sail. The journey to Troy was filled with challenges. They faced fierce storms, hostile encounters with other cities and various trials, including a battle at Mysia where they mistakenly attacked an ally, King Telephus, who later guided them to Troy in exchange for healing his wound. Chapter 6 The arrival at Troy After many challenges, the Greeks finally reached the shores of Troy. They made a dramatic landing, setting up a fortified camp on the beach. The Trojans, led by King Priam and his valiant sons Hector and Paris, fortified their city and prepared for the impending siege. The early years of the war were marked by a series of skirmishes and individual duels. Among these, the duel between Paris and Menelaus stood out. Paris, initially confident, was quickly overpowered by Menelaus. However, Aphrodite intervened rescuing Paris and whisking him away to safety, leaving the duel unresolved. Chapter 7 The First Clashes Achilles, the mightiest Greek warrior, demonstrated his unparalleled prowess on the battlefield. His rage and skill struck fear into the hearts of the Trojans. Alongside him, other heroes like Diomedes, Ajax, and Odysseus distinguished themselves in combat, driving the Trojans back behind their city walls. Throughout the early battles, the gods frequently intervened, each supporting their favored side. Hera and Athena aided the Greeks, 
while Apollo and Aphrodite supported the Trojans. These divine interventions often turned the tide of battle and added a layer of unpredictability to the conflict. Chapter 8 The Quarrel Tensions Within the Greek camp reached a boiling point when Agamemnon was forced to return his war prize, Chryseis, to her father, a priest of Apollo, to end a plague sent by the god. In compensation, Agamemnon took Briseis, Achilles' prize, causing Achilles to feel deeply insulted and humiliated. Enraged, Achilles withdrew from the battle, refusing to fight, which greatly weakened the Greek forces. With Achilles out of the battle, the Trojans, led by the formidable Hector, gained the upper hand. They pushed the Greeks back to their ships and even threatened to burn them. Chapter 9 Desperation The Greek morale plummeted and their situation grew increasingly desperate. In an attempt to resolve the crisis, the wise Nestor and cunning Odysseus tried to persuade Achilles to return to the fight. They offered him gifts and promised the return of Briseis, but Achilles, still seething with anger, refused their overtures. The Greeks were left to fend off the Trojans without their greatest warrior. As the Trojans continued to press their advantage, Patroclus, Achilles' closest friend, begged to wear Achilles' armor and lead the Myrmidons into battle to rally the Greek forces. Chapter 10, The Death of Patroclus. Achilles, moved by his friend's plea, reluctantly agreed, but warned Patroclus not to pursue the Trojans too far. Clad in Achilles' armor, Patroclus fought valiantly, driving the Trojans back and giving the Greeks renewed hope. The Trojans, believing Achilles had returned, were thrown into disarray. Patroclus killed many Trojans, including Sarpedon, a son of Zeus who watched helplessly as his son fell in battle. Despite Achilles' warning, Patroclus pursued the Trojans to the gates of Troy. There, he was confronted by Hector, who, after a fierce struggle, killed him. Chapter 11, The Return of Achilles. As Patroclus lay dying, he foretold Hector's doom at the hands of Achilles. The death of Patroclus sent shockwaves through the Greek camp and devastated Achilles. Grief-stricken and consumed by rage, Achilles vowed to avenge Patroclus. His mother, Thetis, provided him with new armor forged by Hephaestus, the god of blacksmiths. The armor, shining with divine craftsmanship, filled the Greeks with awe and fear. Achilles returned to the battlefield with unparalleled fury cutting down Trojans like a scythe through wheat. He slaughtered countless enemies, including Hector's younger brother, Polydorus. Chapter 12, Hector's Duel. Achilles' rage culminated in a climactic duel with Hector outside the walls of Troy. Hector, knowing his fate was sealed, bravely faced Achilles. The two warriors clashed, but Achilles' superior strength and divine armor gave him the upper hand. He killed Hector and, in his fury, desecrated his body by dragging it behind his chariot around the walls of Troy. King Priam, guided by the god Hermes, bravely entered the Greek camp to plead with Achilles for Hector's body. He appealed to Achilles' sense of honor and reminded him of his own father. Moved by Priam's grief, Achilles returned Hector's body and the Trojans held a grand funeral for their fallen hero, honoring him with tears and lamentations. Chapter 13, The Funeral Games. Achilles organized lavish funeral games in honor of Patroclus, featuring chariot races, boxing matches, and wrestling contests. The games showcased the strength and skill of the Greek warriors, but also highlighted the deep sense of loss felt by all. Despite his invincibility, Achilles was not immune to fate. 
Prophecies foretold his death shortly after Hector's. Paris, aided by Apollo, shot a poisoned arrow that struck Achilles in his heel, the only vulnerable part of his body. Chapter 14, The Death of Achilles. Achilles' death was a devastating blow to the Greeks, and they mourned him deeply. The Greeks held a grand funeral for Achilles, and his armor was awarded to Odysseus after a contest with Ajax. However, Ajax, driven mad with jealousy and disappointment, took his own life, adding to the tragedy. With the war dragging on and no decisive victory in sight, Odysseus devised a cunning plan to infiltrate Troy. The Greeks built a giant wooden horse, hiding a select group of warriors inside. The rest of the Greek army pretended to retreat, sailing away, but hiding nearby on the island of Tenedos. Chapter 15 The Trojan Horse The Trojans, believing the Greeks had abandoned the siege, celebrated their apparent victory. They brought the wooden horse into the city as a trophy, despite warnings from Cassandra, Priam's daughter, and Laocoon, a priest of Apollo. That night, as the Trojans slept, the Greek warriors emerged from the horse, opened the city gates, and signaled the return of the Greek fleet. The Greeks launched a brutal attack on the unsuspecting city. They killed many Trojans, including King Priam, who was slain at the altar of Zeus by Neoptolemus, Achilles' son. The palace was looted, and the city was set ablaze. Chapter 16, The Sack of Troy. The Greeks took many captives, including Queen Hecuba, Andromache, Hector's widow, and Helen, who was returned to Menelaus. The surviving Trojan women were taken as slaves, and the once great city of Troy lay in ruins. The Greek heroes faced various fates on their journey home. Agamemnon was murdered by his wife, Clytemnestra, upon his return. Odysseus endured a long and perilous journey, facing many trials before finally reaching Ithaca. Chapter 17, Odysseus's Journey. Odysseus's journey home, known as the Odyssey, was filled with challenges and adventures. He encountered the Cyclops Polyphemus, outwitted the sorceress Circe, navigated past the Sirens, and journeyed to the underworld. After many years, he finally returned home to Ithaca, where he reclaimed his throne and reunited with his faithful wife, Penelope. The fall of Troy marked the end of an era and left a legacy of sorrow and destruction 